up y'all welcome back to my channel if you're new to my channel hey girl hey make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time i upload a new video so you guys i'm really excited to share this video with you today i'm showing you guys step by step on how to make a frontal wig on the sewing machine so i'm just showing you guys this clip um this is obviously a different wig that i made um this was probably like a couple months ago but i didn't have an intro for this video so i'm just showing you guys but same process of how i make my wigs on the sewing machine super quick and easy this is an updated version from the initial frontal video that i showed you guys so here are my measurements that are blocked off um if you are making wigs for the people it will be different every time so what you want to do after you block your measurements you want to um stretch the cap whatever space that you have extra right there you want to bring that all forward you're going to pin it down and then you're going to take your regular needle and thread and you're going to sew that down so i'm just a perfectionist so i do like to do my stitches neat and like close together but i mean if you don't care because this is all going to be cut off anyway on closures you might want to be a little uh, neat with it but frontals I mean it really doesn't matter because all of this will be cut off after you finish making the wig so I'm just going to show you guys I do the regular you know stitching method how you hand sew to sew this space out so nothing special there now after you finish sewing out the extra space there are one of I'm gonna show you guys one of two steps. I am a lace first type of chick. Like I was taught lace last, but um, I tell you guys all the time, do what works for you. So like I said, I was taught to do lace last, but I'm lace first. So for me, the next step is to place my frontal onto the cap. So I'm just showing you guys the frontal that I'm using today. This, is, this hair is not for my hair company, but um, yeah, this pair was provided by my client so this is the front sole that i'm going to be using and i'm placing it on the cap now one tip that i do have for you guys i didn't go in depth on this but make sure like i'm showing you guys right here the front sole is not lined up so you need to adjust and i didn't show me sewing the front sole down because if you're on this video then you already know how to hand sew with so sew it down is normal so now i'm going to move on to my guidelines now if you do not like doing lace first you will go ahead and place your frontal on do your guidelines and then you will remove the frontal and you will just uh, sew that frontal on after you get done sewing all the wefts on so this is like the updated version of the first video because the guidelines are different i've been working on perfecting frontals for a while now and this um this method of guidelines is my absolute favorite i feel like well you guys will see at the end i will show you but it's so seamless to the frontal like it's so seamless you guys i love this method and i also feel like if you have um different lengths i will be only working with two 10 inch um bundles today but i do feel like if you have different lengths you will be able to get that length in the front and not just in the back if that makes sense i hope that makes sense but these are the guidelines i promise you y'all trust me i promise y'all these guidelines are lit for your frontal wigs i promise i've removed my cap and when you do that you want to make sure that you put your t-pins back in the same spot that you blocked off to ensure when you um, finish to make sure that it fits the head and you didn't shrink the cap or anything so um now i'm gonna go ahead and double the wefts and this all depends on you know how many bundles and everything you have but 10 inch bundles are pretty full and thick so i went ahead and doubled both of them i have an in-depth tutorial on how to double your wefts so if you guys want in-depth i will leave that video down below as well as in that cards in the eye so just click that for the end of tutorial so i'm just showing you guys what those wefts look like nice and neat so i'm going to go ahead and place my cap in my machine and you know we're gonna get we're gonna get started 
Okay, so starting off at the very bottom, the first guideline that we made, you are going to line your track up as close to that frontal without it laying on top as you can. And I'm going to back stitch three, four times. Like, I I don't know, some people only back stitch once, twice. I like doing it three, four, maybe even five times sometimes just to make sure that that track is not going to go anywhere. So I get to the other side of the track. I'm going to cut the weft, measure it, cut it, and then I'm going to back stitch, like I said, three, four, five times to make sure that that weft does not go anywhere. And I did get a couple of questions on Instagram on what do you do with the thread after. So I'm going to show you guys. I'm just showing you what the weft is looking like. And you can clearly see the back stitching. I just think it looks so good. It looks so neat. So I'm going to show you guys what to do with your thread. All you do, you're going to take both pieces of your thread, top and bottom thread, and you're going to make sure that they go to the back of the machine and always make sure that your top thread is up under your presser foot. Um, and if you guys want to know where I got this presser foot from, because you already know if y'all watched me before, open toe presser foots are life. You can see exactly what you're doing. I will link it down below. I got it off of Amazon for like $5. So I'm going to move on to the next track, you guys. And this is all I do, but once I get to the top and really start to get to those curves, I will go more in depth showing you guys. Um, you can kind of see me doing it now. I like to take my left hand and curve my cap so that I'm hitting every point that I need to, because if not, you will end up with buckles and somebody had buckled up and you know bumped and lumped up. So you have to make sure that you continue to get your wefts flat throughout the wig so i'm just gonna do little check-ins and i'm gonna let you guys watch this if you need to rewind pause whatever do that and i will be back And another thing when you take the wig off each time i do like to go in and cut off my thread so that um when i start to sew again it doesn't catch that thread that i previously used if that makes sense um just so it stays neat and it doesn't get all tangled up and just cause a mess so you will have a thread at the top and you will have a thread at the bottom so you want to make sure that you cut both of those so this i did leave in regular time so you guys can see exactly how i sew i'm not going super fast i like to take my time readjust make sure that the cap is flat do not stretch the cap you guys i cannot stress that enough do not i've seen videos and people are telling you guys to stretch the cap do not stretch the cap stretching the cap will cause buckling lumps bumps do not stretch your cap just make sure that your cap is laying flat to your machine and like i said i stop readjust make sure everything is how it's supposed to be and i use my left hand to turn the cap so i make sure i'm hitting those curves how i'm supposed to be that is what you do there it's not a race you guys you go slow and steady whatever is good for you So I always like to just check my work, make sure that I would have my cap flat and there's no buckling in my cap. Once I check that, I move on to the next track. And again, I told you guys, I go slow and steady. I don't push down on the pedal too hard. I do it nice and easy, make sure everything is lined up and just continue on from there.
so I finished doing the last um, curved guideline so now I just have three straight across so I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys watch that and I do like to connect those end tracks to the curved tracks just so everything is nice and seamless All right, so you guys can see I have sewn on my last track and y'all can see how flat it is. That little bump is from the web from, the, from my sewing. Um, and what I like to do, I like to flip my cap inside out, make sure that I got all the thread and I will go ahead and put it on a cap just to make sure everything is looking how it's supposed to um, before like I turn my machine and everything off. But this is what I'm talking about. Do y'all see how seamless this is? That line that you're seeing is the frontal look at how close these tracks are it's literally seamless this is why i love 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 these guidelines so please try these out and let me know how you guys like it i really do love these guidelines much more than the traditional way of making a frontal wig so this is what my this is what the guts the insides are looking like and um yeah so after i do this i will move on to put in the elastic band and the combs Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the elastic band. This is a one inch band, which I really don't like to use on frontals. I prefer to use a one and a half to two inch band. I feel like it gives you more space to really hold down the frontal, but this was a client request, so I did that. So here's a major tip. When you cut your elastic band to whatever measurement you're using, I like to burn the end of it to make sure that it's not frayed or anything. I mean, sewing it down is going to secure, but I feel like this really secures before you even start to sew. So that is one of my little tips that I like to do. I did get this from another wig maker. I will link her name down below because I can't think of it off the top of my head. But this tip is really, really bomb. So now I'm going to go ahead. Um, That's the before and after. So now I'm going to go ahead and figure out my placement. When you make, when you figure out your placement, you're going to make a part, whether you use your finger or a comb, you want to make a part so that you don't catch any hair while you're sewing on the machine. And again, I just like to backstitch about three or four times to make sure that that band is not going to snap off or anything. And that is what it looks like. This will be seamless when you part. I don't do it to where, um, like it'd be a side part. You won't see that. I promise you, you will not see that. So I'm going, right now you guys see me measuring out where I'm gonna place it on the left side and I'm gonna make my part and I'm gonna sew that on the other side. You really wanna make sure that your lace is flat while you're doing this. You don't wanna catch any extra lace to cause any buckling. So this is what it looks like now, nice and secure. And now I'm gonna um, go ahead and sew my combs. So I got this tip from another wig maker. I'll leave her down below as well. Um, I believe hers is wig life but you want to reinforce your combs before you sew them on there and i really do feel like this helps your combs last longer so you're just going to line your comb up to the edge of the cap um you can pretty much see where i'm placing the combs y'all probably know where to place combs anyway but um you just want to backstitch i backstitch these about four times and this is what it looks like nice and seamless and it just ensures that your combs last a little bit longer I'm going to go ahead and sew my other comb on and I'm going to show you guys the finished look of the inside of the wig and you guys I hope that this video was helpful. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions um, concerning how to make wigs and everything so I really hope that this was helpful to you guys. Leave any more requests that you guys have down below and thank you so much for watching. Make sure y'all share this video, like all that good stuff, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell and follow me on social media and I will catch y'all in my next one. Bye.